Hey guys, it's Kaben. I'm here to talk about how True Champion Gaming just hosted its first competitive One Piece event this past weekend and how the new black deck that everyone is talking about actually took first place. The really crazy thing is it even faced its worst matchup throughout 75% of the tournament. The event was 15 players, which is on the small side, but because it was a $30 entry and had multiple boxes of OP2 in the prize pool, there were a good number of pretty experienced players there. I'd say with confidence that it was a harder event than most locals that get to that size. First place ended up getting a whole box of OP2, second place got half a box, and third and fourth got the rest of that box. We also had multiple giveaways going and we're working on getting the entry prizes that people will enjoy that won't cut into the prize pool for the victors. If you're within driving distance of Lansing, Michigan area, keep an eye out for future events. Shout out to the people that showed some really awesome support and drove all the way from Indiana. That was really cool to see. Uh, our goal is to host bigger events like 1Ks in the future, maybe even go bigger than that and be an official Bandai organizer and bring some more official Bandai events to the Midwest because we have so many good and competitive players out here. We really need to see more events, and that's what our goal was. We noticed that official events were selling out super fast, and they were really hard to get into. There kind of weren't that many close to people like in Michigan, Indiana, and all that kind of stuff, so we're trying to fill that gap a little bit. Enough about all of that, let's go talk about this smoker deck. Okay, so this is the winning smoker list. Now, there were four rounds in the tournament and it played against Zoro three out of four of those rounds, which is insane. Like, shout out to Jonathan who won the event. You must have piloted it really well. It's a pretty solid list, I'm assuming, uh, which is why we're like, you know, putting it on the YouTube channel, like titling it so that like people realize like, hey, th this, is, this is getting wins against Zoro. And it played against Law in the other round as well, which is not really a favorable matchup for Smoker. I'd argue that it's closer to 50-50, especially with the pilot that uh, Law had playing in the, t in the event, which uh, was one of our own, True Champion Gaming Terry, who is going to be sharing some exciting news on the channel soon as well. Um, but let's just get right into the list. So we have the one drop 2k counter that negs uh, cost. You know, most of the time you are going to use it as a 2k counter. Definitely try to hold your counters in hand if possible. I think like one of the problems that smoker pilots do are they're just like trying to play their cards, which I think you have to be like a little bit more conservative. Um, smoker is very resource heavy. And if you just use everything without really thinking about it, it might feel like you're winning the game, but then you're going to probably lose after running our resources. So, um, but the, the versatility with being able to neg on play, I think that's the really important thing is that there's a lot of black cards that are more, re uh, like not reactive, but like they have effects when attacking and stuff like that. Those are just a little bit harder to actually use because there's so much board control in OP2. Um, I think the on-play versions are usually better, even if they might be like a little weaker of an effect or something. But again, you're probably going to use her as a 2k most of the time anyways. Um, cheap blocker here for Don Quixote, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have Sun Goku, which is one of those when attacking, but again, it's still a 2k. This is one that you're going to counter with more often the even Suru. Like if I have a Sun Goku and a Suru in hand, I'm probably comboing the Sun Goku first. Uh, we have Garp, again, another when attacking, but it does have a pretty strong effect. Again, you're usually using this as counter. Helmeppo is one of those on play. You give a minus cost three, which is really solid because you can do, like, if your opponent has an eight drop kit out and you don't have enough Dawn um, to do the secret rare Kuzan or something, you go like Helmeppo, Sakazuki or something, and then now you're, you're dealing with that eight drop for pretty much, like, I mean... It's a pretty good tempo swing, honestly. You put a 3k body on the board, a 7k body on the board, and then you trash one card. Like, that's a pretty solid play. Um, and it also does have 1k, because sometimes you don't need the, the 2k counters. You know, 1k is still pretty decent. You have Kobe, which, you know, Kobe's, Kobe's crazy. <laughs> Kobe's a really, really good card. You're usually playing this card instead of countering him. And then you have Tashigi. Uh, which is basically an on play effect because it's not when attacking you just play her and then rest her So it's a little worse because she does like leave herself vulnerable um, But you know again 2k counter so even if you don't play her still very vital in the deck Then you have four Kuzan and four Borsalino You know black SRs are crazy expensive right now Honestly like basically every black super rare from Paramount War is over $10 which is ridiculous but they're all really good. Like, pretty much every black deck is running four Kuzan, four Borsalino, four Sakazuki. 
they're really solid cards and especially with borsalino not being able to be ko'd by effects that like that card alone makes like the law matchup or the red matchup and stuff like that just so much better because all their normal ways of removal just aren't getting there and then we have like kind of the first like flex spot of the deck i'd say um i did actually help jonathan build this list a little bit and this was the card that we added in last so hina could be helpful against the Zoro matchup. He said that most of the time it basically just um, got jet pistols out of their hand, which is like fair because then maybe you can do, you know, your Sakazukis might survive because then they're not going to Otama jet pistol and stuff. So it's not the worst thing in the world if this gets jet pistoled. And if it doesn't, then it's a pretty hefty blocker that's really going to help your defenses. And at the end of the day, the main reason why we added it in instead of some other options that we were considering is it does have that 1K combo because you don't run many 1Ks in here. Borsalino and Kobe have 1Ks, but they're not really cards that you want to combo instead of playing. Usually you're really looking to play those. And then the Don Quixote blocker also has 1K, but again, you're usually playing it as a blocker. So really the only 1K blocker in this deck that you're wanting to combo with most of the time is Helmeppo. So kind of having more 1Ks like really isn't a bad thing, which is why there were some cards that felt like a stronger option, but they didn't have any counter. And we went with Hina in the end. Um, the Sakazuki, like I said earlier, just a great card. And then Kuzan, the reason to play three instead of four, you already are running so many uncounterable cards between your events and your black SRs. You don't really want to run four of these because you don't need to see it until you have 10 Don. It is an extremely important card, so I can see the argument for running four, but you are just going to like get those hands where you have five cards in hand and only like 2k combo power. Um, just more often, the more dead cards you're running. So that's the argument there. But Kuzan's crazy important. You know, in the Kinemon matchup specifically, you either see Kuzan or you lose, basically. That's that's what I found that matchup boils down to. So um, there's just a quick tip. You know, I'd hard mulligan for Kuzan in the Kinemon matchup. And then we have two Meteor Volcano. You know, it's a fantastic card. I would like to run more. Um, but again, it's just that dead card problem. Smoker, you really need to just be focusing on counters, I think, to survive in this meta with how much Zoro's going around. And then Impact Wave, not necessarily a dead card because you actually can combo with it. And can, I mean, that, that card's insane in the Zoro matchup and in, in just so many matchups in general. So that's the deck profile. We actually are going to be posting gameplay from the tournament, including Jonathan's finals match against Zoro. So if you want to see this deck in action against a good Zoro player, Max from Indiana came up and that was who played him in the finals. Probably a pretty good match to watch. Uh, if you're playing Zoro or Smoker in this upcoming format, definitely would be a, a good game to watch and learn, learn a little bit from. So we'll have that video up soon. Until next time, guys.